Welcome, my man. How are you? This is the Touchdown Hoedown. Not to be confused with the Showdown Hoedown, which is the show I started four months ago uh, for PGA Golf, which kind of helped the channel blow the F up. New guy? You probably don't know that. You're probably wondering, who the hell is this guy? Well, I'm a dude named Degenerate75. I'm a high-limit DFS player who uh, started making content for PGA about four months ago, and shit blew up. And I thought, hey, I should try NFL too, because if you don't know, I'm kind of all about uh, teaching people how to be better at DFS. I'm a high-limit player who's been doing it for a long time and been uh, I would say pretty successful at it, and I'm trying to share a lot of the things I know about this to help you get better, which makes me a lot better, because you want to know something new, guy? You're not going to get one single fucking pick here. Oh, yeah, you should probably also know I cuss a lot, and I don't have any corporate overlords, so I don't really care if you like me. But if you do like me and like the cut of my jib, consider liking and subscribing, because you can't help but notice. There's no ads on this channel, you mother father. Okay, there's none, because I'm not a poor. And so to thank me for that, just go drop a like and a subscribe. We'll call it even, right? Uh, you should probably know that I'm going to be doing this show every Saturday. It's just it's just going to be me breaking down my uh, breaking down the slate and giving my final thoughts. Me and my dude, John Galt JD, uh, we do a preview show. We'll get that out every Tuesday. I already have one out this week if you want to go back and check out that. Um, and that's the schedule, right? And then I also do college football. But, you know, if you, if you like if you like the cut of my jib, you maybe come check out my college football content. That's on Fridays. And, of course, I do PGA. If you can't tell by the hat, I'm kind of the showdown king. Uh, produce a lot of content for that. We win a lot. If you never play PGA, what are you doing, new guy? Do you hate money? Because there's an edge over there. It's a, golf's a lot easier to win at than football. Let me go ahead and tell you, brother. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to break down a lot of stuff, and it's going to be a lot of me teaching a lot of the stuff I do over on the PGA site. I'm going to try to pass on to you and help you get better at, uh, at DFS. And that, that's my goal, right? Uh, I'm not going to tell you who to pick. Won't give you one single pick, okay? Actually, I'll probably give you one guy I'm playing, one guy I'm not playing, because that's kind of my shtick. But that's all you're going to get, you mother father. If you don't know, I'm a pretty relaxed dude. We're here to have a good time. I try to provide content in a different way than you're getting it anywhere else. Uh, I uh, am, uh, first of all, with not giving you picks, that already makes me different than about 90% of the slap dick tout sites. But, uh, you know, trying to teach you the right process and how to do it, that's where we do it. Try to bring high energy. Have the ranch water. We always got the ranch water flowing. Mm -mm -mm. Keeps the big guy lively. So uh, that's what we're about. That's the schedule. We're independent. We would really appreciate the um, the subscribe uh, and the like. And without further ado, let's shut the fuck up and get this going. You got to wonder, what the hell is this big will over this dude's shoulder right here? Well, that is tomorrow during my live stream. I'm going to be live streaming right when the first games kick off tomorrow. We'll be watching the games together. We will be going over, uh, you know, uh, uh, who's scoring, how your lineups are doing, if we should do late swap, afternoon injury news. We're going to do it for three hours. Come check out the stream if you want to. But to get on this wheel tomorrow during the stream, I'll do one drawing for the people that are in the stream, but I'll also be rolling this big wheel. You will get to make a free Millie Maker ticket with me for week two for the DraftKings event. We will make the lineup together. I will enter it. We will split it 50-50. So if it hits, um, just know you're going to make half a million bucks. All you got to do to simply get into that drawing is just go drop a comment at the bottom. Who is going to be the slate breaker tomorrow? We all know there's going to be that one asshole that goes off for 37 points tomorrow, and he's the nuts play you have to have. Who's going to be the slate breaker tomorrow? Okay, I'm not going to give you mine. I'll save it to the end. That's it. Or the other thing you can do is go like and retweet this show uh, over on Twitter. That'll also get you a drawing in there. And then I'll just spin this bad boy. I don't want to spin it right now and get somebody's hopes up. But there you go. That is uh, the wheel. We'll be doing that tomorrow. <sighs> I got an important question for you, my man. You're new. You just found me. You're thinking, hey, this guy seems a little different. I'm going to watch the first few minutes of a show. Well, let me ask you the most simplest question ever. It is Saturday, the day before the big Sunday, the week one of NFL. And I have a simple question for you, new guy. Have you made your lineups yet? You have, haven't you? You know you have. This is a, I see this shit all the time. You've had those things made since Wednesday, right? You're, and you're so dedicated. You're so in love with those picks, and you love them, and they've got all your favorite plays in it, and it's correlated, and it's a stack. It's got everything you need. But you don't have all the relevant information, right? How could you make a lineup Wednesday and know what the latest news on ownership is? Injuries leverage all that stuff right these are things you got to know so if you're making your lineups before saturday night shame on you shame on you you should have a player pool guys you like guys you're considering stacks correlations all that but to already have your lineups made and be committed to them shame on you new guy you got to be better than that if you're going to be around here we don't stand for that shit around here <sighs> furthermore like like we got we said we even talked about what contest we're playing in what you got your lineup made what contest it is is it in new guy get it together Get it together. So here we go. 
First thing we're going to look at is contest selection because outside of playing leverage slash ownership game, contest selection is the best way to preserve uh, money uh, and to manage your bankroll. That, there's just no other way around it. Like tomorrow, you are probably playing in this big $5 contest. Kaito going to win a million dollars. No, you're not. Okay, it's There's 1.2 million entries into that. You ain't going to win. Okay, You could live this life 10,000 times. You ain't going to win. Okay, I'm sorry. I sorry. I know you got like this magic set. No one says you're not going to win. Now, if you want to go throw some in there and you got the bankroll to do it, do it. I'll be throwing some in there. Um, just some absolute punt lineups. But uh, you know, I got, I got, I got, I got bankroll management. Right, throwing ten lineups in that for fifty bucks is nothing. Right. So instead of doing that, right, ask yourself, what is my budget? If you have 100 bucks, right, well, then you should let the number of players that you like dictate your bankroll. If you have, you know, uh, say say that there's a couple stacks you want to play for some different games, well, then maybe go look at a 20 max, right, or a 3 max and go play in contests where you can still stay under your 100 bucks. The $4 um, 20 max would be perfect, right? The $1 20 max, and then there's your 100 bucks, right? If you make a lineup and you really only like, you know, one lineup, one stack, you really after another game that's correlated you're so much better going and putting that money in a hundred dollar single entry right all the hundred dollar single entries are missing off here right now because i've already reserved all my lineups in them um so yeah you can't just assume that this is going to be all the tournaments here's a perfect example a hundred dollar single entry tomorrow new guy look at that the prize pool is 125 first place is ten thousand. that's only eight percent of the entire prize pool that's awesome because it's so often you're going to hit a good lineup a really good lineup but it won't be a great 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 lineup that you need to win a gpp and when you hit a really good lineup in a contest with only 1400 people there's a very good chance it can finish like top 10 so when you go look at contest structures look at what percentage of the money goes to first we want that number to always be under 20 percent preferably we want that number pretty close to about 10 percent <clears throat> you don't see that very often, but that's what we definitely want. And then the next rule is we want 10th place to be at least one tenth the first place, right? So we would want to see 10th place being at least $1,000 here. Um, it's actually 1500. This is an awesome contest. If you have a hundred bucks and you like one lineup <clears throat> in the long run, this is such a more positive EV play than going and putting 20 lineups on that $5. Okay, maybe for a single week it's not because your one lineup doesn't hit. But in the long run, if you're willing to put $100 into it every week, you would be infinitely further up on this. <clears throat> you probably don't even know that they take a smaller rake out of this one than they do out of that $5. The payout structure is flatter in this one than in that one. A larger percentage get paid out in this one than that one. More people, uh, 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 you don't have to hit the absolute nuts lineup to win good money in this one versus that one. So, like, there's really just no decision to be made. You've got to start with contest selection. <clears throat> I would lecture you about playing, you know, spreading it out. Don't put it all into one uh, slate. You know, maybe if you want to save some for showdown tomorrow night, play the afternoon slate tomorrow. Check out tiers, double ups, 50 50s, <clears throat> all those things. I got a stitch in my throat. That's why we keep the ranch water available. See, degenerate. You like that big guy? All right, the same rules. And by the way, if you're like, hey, I'm a FanDuel guy, talk about FanDuel. It's the same shit, man. If you're playing in the big $4 tomorrow, shame on you. One third of all the money goes to first. Now, I will say tomorrow, I bet there's probably going to be a, an overlay on this, which is just where they guarantee more money than gets used. <clears throat> if that's the case, then it, you know I'm more warm to playing in it, right? But it's still just a terrible contest. You should be looking at uh, contests with flatter payout structures, smaller fields, uh, and trying to hit really good lineups instead of trying to hit the stone cold nuts. Because how often does your stack hit, but then your secondary stack, you know, is only half ass or that one off running back doesn't pay off, and you don't have the nuts lineup. You just have a really good lineup. So often those lineups would be third place in a hundred dollar single entry, and they're like a min cash in the big five dollar, right? So get the get the fuck out of here with that. Get out of here <clears throat> that's the rules that's what we do okay uh hey there's my channel the degenerate 75 i do golf college football and of course i do nfl uh i'm a little bit different because i do this shit for a living and uh i i'm not i'm not short on opinions brother so uh like and subscribe for me check out my stream tomorrow we'll be there at noon let's get to the most important thing now <clears throat> the slate Okay, I will be using Run the Sims. Uh, Run the Sims to me is the best, um, the best site out there for football. If you're doing fantasy football and you're doing more than twenty bucks a week at fantasy football, specifically DFS football, and you're not using some type of tool site, shame on you. Because everybody, I mean, even like the average player is now using tool sites. You've got to be using tool sites. Um, 
I personally, I run the Sims started last year. I got on board with them. I loved it last year. <clears throat> I've actually partnered up with them this year where if you use my code DGEN75, you get 10% off. So if you are interested in run the Sims, you like what you see today, go use that code DGEN75. That's un all lowercase, D-E-G-E-N-7-5, and that will get you 10% off. You can try the monthly, the weekly, the yearly, whatever you like. <clears throat> I swear by it. So let's get going. Uh, new guy, I'm going to kind of talk to you like y y maybe you're not a pro. Because let's face it, not many people are pros at this shit. It's really, really hard. So the first thing we want to look at is game totals, right? Why game totals? Well, uh, a general rule is the more points being scored in a game, the more fan the more actual points that are being scored in the game, the more fantasy points are being scored. So that's always a good place to start looking, right? But, uh, you know, like the weird thing is, is like it seems like all the good like shootout games are in the afternoon, right? Like you're only ones that seem to have uh, the three clearest uh, high ones are Casey, Arizona, uh, 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 um, what Las Vegas. That seems so weird to say Las Vegas and the Chargers and uh, Philly and Detroit. Those seem to be the three games. And here's a good rule. If you want to know who's going to be chalky tomorrow, well, you could come over to my Patreon and like John Gulp does the ownership for everybody. But if you want to know a good rule tomorrow, it's going to be guys from those three games. Those are the big three games. People are going to want to stack that. So if you want to build a stack that everybody else is building, well, then go stack those games, right? But what we're going to talk about here is maybe not stacking those games. Maybe make your primary stack a game that goes off that people aren't expecting. Yet, it would be foolish to not to not see these big totals and just completely fade these games. So we're going to talk about ways that we can still get access to that game without having the same stack that 15,000 other fucking lineups have, right? We don't want that. That's, that, that. that's a negative EV play. So even if our stack hits, great. Now we still got to nail our other, like, four guys. Get the fuck out of here. So we're going to break this down one by one. Not going to spend too long on them. It's Saturday. You got to get your shit together. You probably got a lot of content to watch. Uh, okay, let's. I'm just going to run through every game. This Pittsburgh Cincinnati game. Uh, the problem with this is they have the Bengals very priced up. Um, to me, if you go look at it, I think this is a game that I don't really want any action on. If I were going to run a, uh, you know, like if I were going to run a stack, I just, you know, Joe Burrow, I just think this, at most, they score like 24 points here, right? And it's going to be kind of a slow, boring game. You know, if Joe Burrow's not super efficient, there's no way that you could stack him because he would have to get Chase and Higgins there or Chase and Boyd or whatever stack you want to do with him. I just don't see any way he gets two guys there in a game that's going to be relatively conservative. Plus, with the Steelers, who the fuck, who do you run it back with? Najee? No, thank you. No, thank you as a Najee run back. <clears throat> you know, I guess you could run it back with George Pickens. Rumor is he's the best receiver there and he's kind of taken over. We'll have to see. To me, I think the best running back on this slate uh, as far as per value is probably Joe Mixon. You can see the optimizer loves him. He's actually, I believe, on the entire slate. He is the most likely guy to be in the uh, – yeah, just using the basic Sims. I'm not going to put my own projections in there and show you because you can. that's what we do on Run the Sims. You can go plug in how you think the games will play out, run the Sims. It'll tell you who's the best plays. Right now, I just have the generic ones in there, right? So I'm, These aren't mine. <clears throat> But based on the generic, you can see Joe Mixon is actually the most likely to be in the optimized lineup this week. So because of that, that really makes me like some Joe Mixon. I'll consider him as a one-off. If I'm going to run it back, i probably run it back with um, with George Pickens as as a punt. Um, I just I don't like Najee. I, 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 Deontay seems banged up. I, I don't know. I don't love the situation over there. Uh, I think the Steelers are going to be hot garbage this year. Uh, this game right here, the Bears and the 49ers, you know, like there's so many guys that people want to be good in this game, but I got to tell you, I think the Bears are really not very good, but I think that they're going to be competitive enough to keep this game low scoring. I really do think this will be like one of those 20 to 17 games and you know, there'll probably be some decent scores, but I just don't see this game having any potential to shoot out or become a big game like that. And because of that, that makes me want to stay away from it. Like that may, I, uh, I, if I were going to play a one-off, I'd probably go in here and get either Darnell Mooney, which I don't want to pay 5,700 for Mooney in an offense that I think sucks, or I go get Elijah Mitchell, right? One thing you could consider is maybe a 49er stack, you know, with uh, what it looks like George Kittle's going to be out. And so if George Kittle's out, that starts to make somebody like, you know, you got to go check out um, maybe looking at Elijah Mitchell, Trey Lance. And I don't think Trey Lance is good enough to support two pass catchers. But if you think he throws one or two bombs to Ayuk, well, then all of a sudden a Lance, Ayuk and Mitchell, if they do end up scoring, you know, 31 points and have 360 yards of offense, well, then all of a sudden that stacks. That stack probably is the nuts. So that's that's a really sneaky stack to consider. Um, you know, I personally I just don't love this spot. I don't think they're gonna score a ton of points. 
Man, I got to tell you, I'm very high on Baker Mayfield this year. Uh, you know, Nick Chubb's awesome, but uh, this game, I just hate the total. It just seems like this game, there's some very safe points to be had there, but not a ton of shootout. You know, I'm very warm on DJ Moore this season. I'm very warm on Baker Mayfield this season. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I, I'm high on how they're going to produce. However, in this game environment with a total of only 42, I think this is going to be kind of a very slow game. It wouldn't surprise me if both teams didn't even get to 60 plays. And so because of that, at most, I'm probably playing a one-off in Christian McCaffrey. Um, you know, that that's just about the only one that I really see that is viable. Uh, Nick Chubb might be sneaky at 6,500. Uh, I just hate that, you know, like Kareem Hunt gets about 35% of the action, and Kareem Hunt's pretty badass himself. So once again, these early games, they kind of suck. <clears throat> All right, let's move on to Baltimore and the Jets. Uh, you know, once again, here's a good general rule. Lamar, Jalen Hurts, guys like that, they can be fantasy monsters, but they cannot support two receivers. Okay, so if you're wanting to do a triple stack with Lamar, you know, you want to run him with Andrews, I would say that you're probably going to have to pick the running back, which it's looking like Drake is going to play. Uh, I don't think Kenyon Drake is a great play for the Ravens. The Ravens are notorious for not getting their running backs enough touches. If it were J.K. Dobbins, I would be more interested, but Kenyon Drake, no thanks. So you run Lamar with either Andrews or Bateman. I think those are the only real ones. And then if, you know, I, I would say make it just a skinny stack, right? Maybe run it back with Elijah Moore. Uh, that's the only one. A lot of the stacks that I make, new guy, I make them based on how much I like the run back also, right? Because I know you got your stacks, and you think your stacks are so good, and they're so, oh, I've got the best stack. Dude, I mean, honestly, the real truth is your stack or the other stack that you didn't go with are just as likely to go off. So I like to pick my stacks, not with my heart, but basically which one is going to be the lowest owned and which one has a really good run back for me. And in this game, you know, as much as I could definitely see a Lamar stack working, I just don't think it's a real game stack. If anything, I'm running a Lamar and Andrews, a Lamar Bateman, and maybe be running it back with more as a little sneaky skinny stack right that's that's not a big stack. to be a full stack you usually want a quarterback with two of his receivers and run it back from two guys from the other team at least one guy but definitely uh pre preferably two but definitely one that's what i'm trying to say so that's uh you know that's not a full game stackable that's not a stackable game to me i think this one's sneaky this one i'm really warmed up to i i with only having a 43 point total this new orleans atlanta game i think it's going to be <clears throat> i think it's going to be um it could – I'm not – I don't think it will be. I think it could be higher scoring than that, right? It's, you know, Atlanta, we're just assuming that they're going to run a nice Manila, uh, conservative, boring offense. Mariota just being a game manager, you know, occasionally runs for a first down type slap dick, right? But because of that, I don't think anybody's going to be highly owned in this. Uh, maybe Michael Thomas is what I'm seeing might have some ownership, but, like, go ahead. I'll, I'll gladly fade him, right? And uh, I think I think we're still – he was limited in practice Friday, so we'll have to we'll have to check his injury status tomorrow. But Mariota is one of those guys. He can't get two guys there. But a guy like Cordell Patterson is kind of different, right, because he can get there running and receiving. He's going to be doing a little bit of both. So a Mariota pitts patterson stack – is actually very, very viable this week. They're, it's a very cheap stack, first of all. They're, none of them are expensive, so it's a very cheap stack. And because it's a cheap stack, it's, it's easy to go get studs from other games. You can go run another correlated stack that's very, very appealing. Plus, they have a great run back. Alvin Kamara is a home run um, value play, right? He's going to not be that owned. He'll be less than 10%, and the optimizer rate has him at 16% with the generic um, <clears throat> inputs. So that makes him one of the highest leverage players on the slate, right? Because you just take what's their projected ownership, uh, uh, subtract that from their optimizer rate, and that's your uh, optimized leverage. And at 8.8% and Cordell Patterson at 106 that's two of the highest optimized leverage plays on the slate. Um, and if you're really you're playing the game, right, you're not making your picks. You've got your picks, and they mean so much to you. But if you're actually playing the game and you're playing who are the highest leverage plays, what are the lowest owned stacks, and you're correlating those together, that's how you can be successful. Because DFS is so hard. And on a given week, we're all fucking losing. But over the long run, if you're playing these advantages and you're doing these things, that's how you that's how you become an edge player. That's how you do it. It's hard. It takes a lot of work, and it is not something you learn in a week. And it's definitely not something you do without tools. Okay. So this game sneaky. Uh, I I've even warmed up to the idea. Hold on, let me. Hold on. Okay, sorry, I threw up in my mouth. I've actually warmed up to the idea of a Jameis Winston stack. Winston Kamara, especially if I can get Michael Thomas out or limited for Sunday. You know, go load me up like some Jarvis Landry or some Chris Olave or something like that, right? Because Jameis don't mind chunking the ball, um, and so uh, I. I 
that's one I think that I've gotten really warm on. Out of these first five games, I'm definitely the most warm on that one being a sneaky one. All right, we're moving on here. We've got Indianapolis and Houston. This is one of those games where everybody's going to be on Taylor and Pittman. Uh, with Indianapolis with the perceived safe team total and two usage monsters like Taylor and Pittman, uh, they seem like good plays. And I will say this, though. Taylor was super efficient last year. If you want to keep baking on that efficiency, you go ahead. Um, and this game does seem to check all the boxes that he would get there. And I'm not opposed to playing him. But 9,100 is noticeably more expensive than all the other running backs. As a matter of fact, it might be the most expensive guy in the entire slate. Um, uh, and then Pittman is just way too low for how much he's going to get. If anything, I would not play both of those guys in a lineup. I don't see a game script in which both of those guys get there. A good way to leverage off of one of the other's ownership is just to play one of them and not the other guy. That's it, right? And if you're going to play those two and you think one of them's going to have a big day, there is a decent chance that Houston is a good that Houston's playing them tough and they're a good bring back. Uh, you know, you bring it back with Cooks or you bring it back with Pierce. I think Pierce is going to be. You know, just because people draft him in best ball, I think he's going to be a little bit higher owned than this is showing. Um, so I'd rather run it back with Cooks. You know, he catches two big touchdowns. He's the nuts play, and he's keeping the game competitive. That's kind of what I'm hoping. All right, the uh, I that game I the only the uh, to conclude on that game. The two guys I like the most are going to be too highly owned. I think I'm just going to hope that those guys aren't efficient, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna you know make my stands elsewhere. You got you got to make some decisions. If you're just going to go play every one of the good running backs at 20% of your lineups, you're just eating that you're just eating the rake, man. You're just paying the rake because you're playing them at the same uh, rate that everybody else is. Make your stands, make your stacks, make your correlations and then uh, just go with it. Go with it, right? All right, this Jacksonville Washington game, I I really like it. I mean, this is me wanting to be a believer, right? I am a Trevor Trevor Lawrence truther. I think he's going to be so good this year. I, I think he's the I think I have him in like 40% of my best ball lineups. Uh I just I I just think he's going to be good this year. Uh and I think Washington is a team that could give up some points. And so because of that, I love this game. I mean, I love this game. Uh, too much is the truth. Right? This is of all the early games. This is without question my favorite game, and it shouldn't be with only a forty-four point total, right? But a Lawrence Etn Kirk stack sounds disgusting. But Etn catches one screen to the house, gets another rushing touchdown. Kirk gets seven receptions, hundred and twelve yards, and a touchdown. Uh, Lawrence throws th uh, three touchdowns. That's a nut stack. That is a nuts type stack right there, and it's super affordable. And to me, you have some really nice runback options because although Washington doesn't uh, seem to have a great offense, Gibson and tr uh, uh, Terry McLaurin are both usage monsters. Well, Gibson's going to be a usage monster now that homeboy, you know, kind of got whatever shot up. Uh, and so those are good runbacks for me. And honestly, Johan Dotson's not even a bad stack. I think he's going to be a little too owned, but like as a runback, I mean, he's a legitimate option. And I've got an even grosser one for you. If that one grossed you out, wait for this one, new guy. What about Carson Wentz? Antonio, no, no, Carson Wentz, excuse me, because if Carson Wentz is going to get there, if he's going to get two receivers there, one of them's almost definitely going to be McKissick, right? Catches a screen or something or uh, you know, a dump off pass and takes it to the house. And then McLaurin uh, or Logan Thomas, whoever you want to run, right? And then you have some great bring backs with ETN or Kirk. I mean, no one's going to be owned. I mean, that one will be 1% of 1% owned. But if it hits, you might be the only person in a GPP with that stack. So it's just something to consider. If you think that game's going to uh, shoot off, which I think that game has a better chance to shoot off than anybody else is predicting, just like the Atlanta-New Orleans game. And they, they might not, but I'm just saying they have a chance. I think that the right pieces are in place for a shootout-type script. So uh, I, I'm very interested. Now let's get to the, the definite chalky game of the morning slate. Morning, noon. It starts at noon here because if you don't know, new guy, we're in the Lord's time zone. So when I tell you to come watch tomorrow, that is 12 Central Standard Time Zone. We call it noon around here. Be here. Watch the stream. I'm going to help you make late swaps. I'm going to track the lineups for you. We're going to see if anybody's doing good. We're going to see all my little showdown hoedown symbols at the top of the leaderboard. It's going to be effing fantastic. So... Uh, let's get to the, the this game. This one I, I, I love because it's going to be super chalky. People are going to force in Jalen Hurts stacks, and Jalen Hurts is just not a guy you want to stack, especially now that we don't know who his usage is going to go to. There is no way Jalen Hurts can feed Goddard, Smith, and Brown. There's no way he can feed them all. They, they, he's just not efficient enough to feed that many mouths. So a Jalen Hurts stack is going to be a bad idea, I think. Right? And then you go to the other side. I think a sneaky stack is the golf stack. Um because I don't, I, he won't be, he'll be way lower owned, obviously. But 
for him to get there, he would definitely have to get two pass catches there. He's a statue. So you go you go pair him with Hawkinson or St. Brown. Are you really want to get creative? Go uh, Swift and St. Brown. That's a pretty tricky stack. That's a way to get access to this game without having the same damn stack that everybody else has. Because it doesn't matter if your stack hits if you have to share it with 10,000 people. So don't do that. I can tell you what I'm going to do. Games like this, I feel like a lot of this is, I call it the hard knocks narrative. People are thinking that this game is going to be more shootouty than it really is. So I'm just going to play that it's not going to be shootout. And just to give myself a little bit of leverage, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the two guys I was already interested. So I do have some part of this game. And I hope that I catch a script in which my guys do well, yet the game doesn't shoot out. And the two guys that I really like from this are Amon Ra St. Brown. I think he's I think he's a future star. I think he's going to get at least 10 targets. Uh, he gets in the touchdown. All of a sudden, he's a smash play. Uh, give me all the Amon Ra St. Brown. He's coming in way lower owned than everybody else in this game. So he's highly leveraged. He's in a shootout game. And I already love him. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, he might be my top play guy tomorrow. The other one, Miles Sanders. Everybody's thinking, oh, I've got to get Jalen Hurts in. Jalen Hurts might be the highest owned quarterback tomorrow. So if everybody's saying Jalen Hurts and everybody wants to play A.J. Brown with him or want to stack him with Goddard or stack him with uh, Smith, whoever the hell, just go, just go play a narrative that the Eagles are running the ball well and Miles has the big game. They get down to the one-yard line and Hurts gives the ball to Sanders and he falls in for the touchdown and he steals those points from Hurts. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run some Amon Ra, uh, St. Brown, and some Miles Sanders uh, correlations opposite of each other, and that will be my action to this game. I would say the other one where you can get some real great leverage in is Hawkinson. He might be a really good one-off tight end. Uh, or you could, I guess you could run him back against Sanders. All right, let's get to the afternoon. I really wanted to get access to this uh, New England Miami game, but here's the problem with this game: uh, it's just it's so freaking hard to tell wh where the usage is going to go. Right? Like usage is only good. Like knowing that there's going to be a lot of fantasy points scored in a game. This is another one of those games I think could be sneaky high scoring. And because of that, I wanted to get access to this game. But it's really hard to get access to a game when it's not clear where the fantasy points are going to go. When the fantasy points are going to be spread out, you're just fucking guessing. So you have to guess that the game's going to be right. You got to get that part right. Because if it's a if it's a 17-14 game, it doesn't matter who you picked. And not only do you have to get that the game script is right, but then you have to get the right players within that game script. So fuck that. I hate doing that. And so for New England, who's going to get their points tomorrow? Like part of me likes Damian Harris. You know he's going to start. But then part of me knows that Ramondre Stevenson's the better back. You know, their wide receivers are just always a cluster fook. Uh, I'm not going to do it. There's just no way. Uh, I, I'm going to go try to guess. And then Mac, uh, Mac Jones by himself, I, there's just no way. He, he would For him to have an optimal type game, he needs to support two receivers. And I don't know who they're going to be. So because of that, I'll be playing no Patriots. Well, then you say, all right, well, Miami, run it back with them. They got some home run guys. Yeah, but I feel like Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle are both priced appropriately based on their skill level. Um, Tua, uh, you know, I don't mind a Tua stack, but is Tua really good enough to get Hill and Waddle there? Or if you want to just run it with one, well, then who's my bring back? This is what I'm talking about. If I'm already not in love with a stack, I'm definitely not going to play a stack when there's nobody on the other team I like a bring back from. And because of that, I'll end up not playing this game. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Green Bay versus Minnesota. This one, uh, I feel like, once again, it's going to be another one of those high-owned afternoon games, and because of that, I'm just going to get a piece of it. I loved Alan Lazard, but now that he's out, uh, it's seeming like Randall Cobb is getting some ownership, and he might start to be uh, more of a legitimate play at just 3,400. I think Tanyan is a great one-off here. Or what I really like is I like Tanyan and running back against Dalvin Cook because of all the top owned or of all the uh, highly priced running backs, Dalvin Cook will definitely be the lowest. You know, I, Thielen, Jefferson, Jones—they're all going to be uh, decently owned. Uh, you know, maybe maybe AJ Dillon finds the end zone three times or something. I don't love that. I don't love relying on touchdowns. I want guys who are going to touch the ball a lot, get a lot of. Uh, potential to me this is one of those games that's going to be highly owned uh if you want to get access to this game you probably should look at like cook and tanyan that would, that, that would be the contrarian play right uh or you know maybe uh maybe go play some defenses i don't know all right uh chargers versus uh the raiders this is one of those games man it has a really high projected total. I think this will be the first or second most chalky game tomorrow, and because of that, I want to avoid it. I almost always avoid the chalkiest game and go try to get on the third, fourth, fifth chalkiest game down the chart that still you know, has some potential for a big shootout. 
So this game right here, there's a lot of stars. It's not clear who's going to necessarily get the points. Uh, everybody is priced pretty fairly. Uh, Joshua Palmer seems to be, you know, probably the best low-level punt. Uh, Darren Waller got his big contract today, so maybe he's excited and he'll go out there and be motivated. I don't, not a real big contract narrative guy. Uh, you know, if you want to get some ac some access to this, it would appear as though Keenan Allen is the best leverage play. Maybe he's just a good one off, so you have some action in this game uh, if it does shoot off. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be fading it because I'm going to be giving all my attention over here to this Kansas City Arizona game. Uh, why would I play this one? They're both basically the same totals, but why do I like this KC over Arizona game? Well, first of all, uh, it's in Arizona, and I swear I can just visualize so many shootout games going off in that little weird dome they have, right? Second of all, uh, this game, the usage is more concentrated, right? Like, I know what to expect. I, I just feel like Travis Kelsey is, like, if, if Kansas City scores a lot of points, I just don't see any way he doesn't have a big game, right? Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster seems like he's very likely to get a lot of the action. Uh, let's see. Wide receivers. I feel like, uh, you know, I, I can kind of trust that uh, that that with uh, Arizona that uh, somebody like uh, – uh, 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 Moore and uh, Hollywood Brown both get there, right? I think Hollywood Brown's going to be a little over-owned. <laughs> if I were going to stack Kyler, I would stack him with somebody else, maybe even James Conner. That'd be a sneaky stack. No one's going to play James Conner. Isn't there a path to which uh, Kelsey, Mahomes, and uh, let's see, maybe Juju Smith-Schuster have a big one and you run it back with Connors, and now you're all over this game and you've played a stack that legit not even 1% of people would have considered? That's a way to get different. Uh, those are some stacks to consider to be a little bit different than everybody else in this game. Uh, the last game that I skipped over here uh, is an afternoon game that I was wanting to love. I really like Derrick Henry, but here's the question. Who do you run it back with? Do I go run it back with freaking Saquon Barkley that's going to be mega chocolate? That he's literally the most over leveraged player on the on the slate uh, with the base projections in, right? He's getting owned at 19%, and he's only in the optimal 4.6% of the time. So because of that, you know, it may, well, then why don't we play Daniel Jones? Well, here's why you don't play Daniel Jones. You don't play Daniel Jones because, like, who the hell's his receiver going to be? I'm hearing Sterling Sharp or Sterling Shepard from OU is the most likely to get the targets, which breaks everybody's heart because everybody wants to own Tony. They drafted him a best ball. Everybody's all in on Wandell. But honestly, I've you know, those guys, they're just not going to be starting on the field from what I'm hearing from some sources I trust. So because of that, you know, like, I – I think Robert Woods, a Robert Woods, Derrick Henry, um, Ryan Tannehill could be a very, very sneaky stack uh, because Derrick Henry could get there independent, and then Tannehill only has to support one receiver in Woods. It's a relatively cheap stack. Uh, problem is, who are you going to run it back with? I feel like you almost need to run it back with Barkley for the safety, but, man, do you really want to be doing that? I don't know. What I would take from this is take your stacks that you really like. Tomorrow, I'm playing 20 lineups. I will probably play two or three stacks. What is a stack? Well, when I say stack, I'm talking about my big stack. That's usually a quarterback and two wide receiver, two pass catchers, or a quarterback, a complimentary running back, and one of his receivers, right? If it's usually a, run, a runner like uh, Hertz or Jamar, I usually do the quarterback, running back, and a pass catcher, right? Uh, and then I always have at least one bring back from the other team, either a running back or a receiver from the other team, sometimes two. Okay, that's 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 how I like to do it, and I use that's all what I call a stack. It's always four or five players from my main game, but then within that lineup, I always go make at least one correlated secondary stack. What is a the secondary stack is just a one v one, right? In case a game shoots out and two guys would complementary make each other do well. If Amon Ross St. Brown is having a good game, that's likely correlated to Miles Sanders having a good game. If the if Philadelphia is running the ball and controlling the clock and Miles Sanders is getting a hundred yards rushing and a touchdown, well then it's very likely the Lions are behind in their passing and Amon Ross St. Brown is getting more targets, right? Those are complementary stacks. You think Trevor Etienne is getting a lot of uh you know running the ball well and he's the primary back in Jacksonville well that probably means Terry McLaurin's getting more targets because they're playing from behind so I always have at least one secondary correlated stack I prefer to have two more of those 1v1 stacks and that's basically my whole lineup so I have nine guys in my lineup and they're all correlated and you say well how can you correlate the defense well new guy it's pretty easy to correlate a defense one thing you can do is you can go play the defense that is opposite of your quarterback so if your quarterback throws a pick six not only are you getting eight points for your defense for a pick six but now your quarterback is in a game script that benefits him passing the ball more the other thing you can do is go play a running back that is the same defense uh, it's the same as your defense because if the defense is doing well there's very often that team is ahead and the running back is running the ball and controlling the clock and maybe busting a late touchdown 
So when you're making your lineups, have your big primary stack, four or five guys. That's three from one team with a run back of one or two. Look to have one, preferably two secondary stacks in that lineup. Okay, and that's it. And you make lineups that make sense. Don't leave, you know, this this is the one week you could consider leaving a little bit of money on the table because pricing is so soft. Also, when you're making your stacks, that's when you want to consider ownership. I don't worry too much about ownership. Jonathan Taylor is going to be 20%. I don't really care that much about his ownership because I just know how good he is. If his ownership is somewhere in line, like if he's 20% to be in the optimal and he's 20% owned, I don't mind playing Jonathan Taylor. That's not bad chalk. That's you know equal chalk, right? It's like about what it should be, 20% and 20%. Uh, but what I won't do is just go play him and not probably have some type of run back, some type of correlated play to him, right? If I'm going to eat that chalk, I want him to at least be correlated to somebody else in the game that may be different. These are things to consider when making your roster. Um, you know, use most of your salary. Don't leave $2,000 on the table, but if you want to leave a few hundred dollars on the table, go ahead, especially if it helps you make a lineup that you like. Um, you know, but then, uh, and then the last thing, don't play a fucking chalk defense, okay? Who's going to be the chalk defense? You know, I shouldn't show you this, but I'll show you. Let's see. Let's go click on the whole slate. Uh, all right, whole slate. Uh, we'll go search by defenses. Projected highest own, the commander's defense against Jacksonville. I, I would agree. They're probably going to be the highest because you get the price discount and everybody thinks Trevor Lawrence sucks. Um, so they'll be very highly owned. And I just don't think that's a good idea to play the highest owned defense. I don't care how much of the salary rate they are. All these defenses are random. Game scripts are random and shit can happen. So I wouldn't consider doing that, right? Plus, I don't know if I would trust these ownership. 11 seems a little low. If you want better ownership, you come check out John Gold JD over on my Discord. Come check it out, my man. Uh, I, that's all I got for you. I'll see you tomorrow at noon. It has been real. I hope you kick ass tomorrow. I hope you like and subscribe. I hope you come check out my Discord. But most importantly, I hope you enjoy my outro.